The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. So Ken, today you talked a lot about what to think about when setting up planters. Talk a little bit about some of the, um, the most common things that go wrong at planting that cause that, that yield robbing variability in plant stands that you talked about. Probably the big one is matching up the planter speed to conditions, condition of the soil, condition of the planter itself. Um, if we're in a no-till environment, for instance, uh, demands more down pressure to begin with, and if we're driving that planter too fast, we may not be carrying enough down pressure. We get row unit chatter, uh, unit coming out of the ground, and we start changing the planting depth itself. Uh, if we're going uh, too fast and we demand more down pressure in conventional till to keep it in the ground, because the row unit is kind of like a jet ski, the faster you pull the planter, it wants out. So the more down pressure is applied to keep it in, and farmers will over apply down pressure. So they'll start to create sidewall compaction and problems they shouldn't have in conventional till that we only have in no-till. So it's amazing how many things that we can fix by slowing the planter down. Once we slow the planter down, that allows us to take some excess down pressure off. Uh, and it allows us to, uh, a lot of times, actually run in moist, uh, I wouldn't say wet environments, but we can run in moist environments because we don't have such a high down pressure requirement on the planter. As soon as we jack the down pressure too high, then moisture is going to be a concern and sidewall smearing and how aggressive our row cleaners get and all that. Talk about a little bit about you know the need to think about the setup of your planter as you go from different soils um, and even into different fields. The setup's pretty big. Some of it we can do right now as we think about our soils, how we want that planter set up, our sandier soils versus our heavier clay loams, our no-till versus conventional till, what kind of row cleaners, closing wheels, how we're going to have set up. But once we get to the field next spring, then we have to be looking at conditions on a field by field, soil type by soil type basis within the field. So I always recommend that we stop that planter in the toughest conditions of the field and go behind it and start doing our investigating and digging to see is this depth that we want, are we closing the slot like we should, and start making adjustments. Unfortunately, too many growers run the planter the way they ran it last year, and they aren't making adjustments from year to year, much less from field to field. Today's technology actually allows us to start making changes as we go across the field, and that's pretty exciting because that's what we need on the planter. We need to set it different for some of our sandy knobs versus our heavy clays, uh, and that technology is, is starting to show up everywhere. You talked about obviously um, slowing down the planter, thinking about different soil types. Um, what are some of the other things that are on your list? Well, of course, I think it all starts with choosing the right genetics for that situation. So I think you can't spend too much time with your seedman uh, trying to figure out how am I going to best dial in the genetics that I need for the field and that type of thing. Once we get the genetics picked for whatever reason we're doing it, then we got to do the best job we can planting it. And that means taking that meter uh, to the stand with your seed. Uh, you can take your meters in to be calibrated, but if you don't take the seed in that you're actually going to plant, you can't get a true calibration. So whether I'm planting flats or rounds or whatever I'm up, some of the new meters today can handle just about any seed size. And some of our old meters can still handle the, the different seed sizes. They just struggle when you shift from a meter that's set for a small flat to a large round seed, and you need to know how to adjust accordingly. So. Um, Matching up the meter performance um, to the seed size, I think, is one of the crucial things of getting that singulation up. Um, just a couple of thoughts from you on how should growers, you know, assess a corn stand, what they should be looking for when they scout. I was trying to drive home the point today uh, that they need to go out there and, and do an, an, uh, a good infield analysis, and that means uh, coming out of there with actual numbers. Uh, numbers that are written down uh, in a book, a record keeping system where they're going to go out there and actually collect population data mm -hmm. and uh, what they think their possible ear count is coming back throughout the season and then in the end finishing up what did we finish up with. So if I planted 36,000 plants out there, how many actual harvestable ears did I produce? Mm -hmm. And I think that's crucial. If you don't go out and give yourself a good evaluation, there's no way of knowing whether you're improving or not. Is it just genetics that increases your yield or is it your management skills? We're fortunate corn responds to management. So a good evaluation of going out there, stretch the tape out, a uh, thousandth of an acre, 17 feet, five inches on a 30 inch row, count every plant, record that, and then look at and see what the uniformity is. Uniformity in spacing, 
Uh, we call that the picket fence stand. Is every plan singulated uniformly and got the good standard deviation between it as far as the spacing goes and then looking at growth and development. Growth and development is the important one. That's the one that costs us the most in yield. So are they all at the same vegetative stage? Do I have all V4 plants or is there some V4 and V2? And then I'm going to write that number down and record it so as I fix the problem I can come back next year and say yep I've gained or I've lost. I kind of get an idea. Um, am I making the right moves? A lot of equipment they can buy at the farm shows and they'll never know whether they're getting a return on the investment without some type of infield evaluation. Great. Now you talked a little bit about even distribution and uniformity. How important is that and you know again how can we assess it in the field? It's all about when it all comes to the end it's all about ears. Uh, we get grain off the ears so we always say ear count, ear count, ear count. What is my ear count out there? And when they're doing their evaluation, um, a lot of farmers think about what they planted and what they planted and what they harvested for ears. Uh, for our guys, our goal is to, uh, I'll give them, in a thousandth of an acre, I'll give them one hiccup, one barren plant. Anything above that, we're gonna say that we need to fine tune. Uh, it's a tough job to get to, but it's important. Of the two, um, while seed singulation is important, getting each seed space equally distance apart from each other so they have the same competition for sunlight and everything else, no doubt growth and development or the photocopied part of the scene is the most important. Uh, and that's probably where we focus on. As soon as I see plants that are falling behind or were late to germinate, we need to dig in and investigate what caused it. And is it something they did that can be fixed for next year or maybe it's a Maybe something is like a wireworm or a cutworm type scenario, uh, and it's something they didn't do, but it's something they can manage for next year. Uh, maybe if, if they know they have a wireworm problem in that field, they would be coming back with an insecticide that can handle that insect. Great stuff. Well, thanks again for your time. You bet.